The Johnson Wax Program. <laughs> Presenting Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly. Williams and his orchestra open the show with Stop, You're Breaking My Heart. take the trouble to write to us that they started using Johnson's self-polishing glow coat five or six years ago when El Enoleum was new. They tell us that this remarkable no-rubbing polish has protected it so beautifully from the daily wear of scuffing feet, from dirt and stains, that today, after years of service, their linoleum still shines as brightly as it did when it was first put down. Now, if you have a linoleum rug in your dining room, or if there's linoleum on your sun parlor or kitchen floor, protect it now with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, so it will stay beautiful always. Look for the attractive yellow can. Oh, yes, remember, it's very economical to buy the larger sizes. a new theatrical season in Westful Vista, and the Literary Drama and Pinochle Club has hearkened to the plaintive call of the box office. So Fibber, modestly coming forward again as author, director, producer, and actor, has offered to write another of his deathless dramas. And here in the dining room at 79 Westful Vista, writing and darning socks respectively, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> McGee, look at these socks. How on earth do you wear them out so fast? Never mind the socks, Molly. Theatrical history is being wrote here. While you sit and darn. While I sit and darn. You betcha. Wait till you hear the critics. <laughs> I'm up against a problem on this Shakespearean play here. Now, let's see. Did Julius Caesar know Helen of Troy? Why not? That's what I say. Why not? <laughs> well, I'll make them my two principal characters. Oh, hey, I got an idea. What? Why not make Julius Caesar a hunter? I could call the play Deer Slayer or The Merchant of Venison. <laughs> you get it, Molly? The Merchant of Venison? Hey, Venice? funny, McGee. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I guess Caesar wasn't much for stags anyway. <laughs> I got to put in Hamlet. And then there's Mark Anthony and Brutal. Brutus. Who's writing this? <laughs> I'm going to have Mark and Julius run a chariot race to see which one of them don't marry Helen of Troy. Which one of them don't marry her? Sure. Neither one of them likes her, see? That's where I get the emotional conflict. Julius will win the race and lose the gal. Ah, <laughs> oh, goodness, they aren't me. Why, naturally not. Otherwise, she'd love him. I mean these socks. Oh. <laughs> you see, at the end of the second... If that's Jed Harris or the Schuberts, tell them they can't see my play till it's finished. <laughs> they couldn't see it if it was finished. <laughs> Hello, 79 Wistful Vista, Molly McGee speaking. Oh, yes, Mrs. Uppington. No, we're not busy. I'm writing socks and McGee is knitting a play. Writing uh, a sock play, tell her. Yes, Mrs. Uppington. i let you talk to McGee. McGee. What does she want? Ask her. What do you want? Or I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, Mrs. Uppington. Huh? 
Oh, the play. Yes, uh, I, I'm working on it, Uppy. Julius Caesar and Helen of Troy. Huh? Well, no, Mrs. Uppington. I, I'm afraid you ain't exactly the type to play Helen. <laughs> you, you got too much... Uh, <laughs> too many... Uh, uh, well, Helen was a skinny little runt, I think. <laughs> yeah, I... I know you're the president of the club and all Tell that. Tell her she can be a chariot horse. You can be a chariot... Uh, er, <laughs> what, what I mean to say, Eppy, is that I was figuring on you as, as a Roman matron. No, no, not in the jail. Just, just, just a kind of a soldier type. Dowager, Ignis, not soldier. What say, Eppy? Oh, now, don't worry about that, Uppy. You got one of the fattest parts. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Ah, huh. oh, shucks. I'm just going to tell her she's got a part that'll stand out. <laughs> she hung up just in time, then. Let's see, now, then, if Mark Anthony and Julius Caesar... I'm afraid you've ruined those heels, McGee. Caesar was no heel. Oh, you mean them socks. Quit bothering me about them trivial socks, Molly. Probably my stage carpenter wanting to know if the chariot's got rumble seats. <laughs> Come in. Uh, hello, Fibber. Hello, Molly. Oh, Ted Wing. Got the music all arranged for the play, Ted? I want this music good, you know, on account of because this may be my last play. Well, then, how about Goodbye, Jonah? Goodbye? Uh, anything personal in that crack, Theodore? What do you think? Oh, I don't know. What do you think, Molly? I'm sure of it. So am I. Well, if you're sure of it, go ahead. <laughs> Goodbye, Jonah. <laughs> Here's the costumes right here. Let's go in. They say this guy has got everything from putty noses to tin shirts. Mm. Oh, look at the costumes, McGee. I'll say so. Oh, hi, bud. You the proprietor? Yeah, what's he? Are you in charge here? Don't charge nothing, daughter. Strictly cash. We didn't ask you to charge anything. We want some costumes for a play. Roman costumes. Yeah, what's he? Roman costume, Julius Caesar. Right in the beezer, eh? <laughs> Hurt you much, Johnny? Oh, forget it. Do you mind if we look around and pick out what we need? Don't believe so, Johnny. But you can look around and see for yourself if you like. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a cafeteria, huh? I don't know where to look first amongst all this junk. Well, I'll see. I'll need a helmet, a toga, a short sword, and some sandals. Hey, look at that suit of armor, Molly. I wish I'd have wrote a play about King Arthur. I'd like to have wore that iron costume. I think this play is clanky enough as it is. <laughs> Say, how did the old knights ever get into those suits? I don't know, but it must have been a nuisance to have to go to a foundry to get your pants pressed every year. <laughs> now, let's see. Where's the togas? They ought to... hey, one side there, little girl. Why? Well, we're busy. we got to pick out some costumes. Hmm? I says we got to pick out some costumes. 
Do you go no parties? Who are you? Who? No. no, we're not. This is for a play we're, we're, we're putting on. What are you doing here anyway? I'm looking for Halloween masks, I bet you. Oh. <laughs> You're kind of rushing the season, ain't you? Hmm? I said, well, what? I, Halloween is a long way off yet. I know it. Well, then, what's your hurry to pick out a Halloween mask, then? Well, gee, last year, all the other kids had funnier faces than I did, I bet you. And I thought I'd get a head start this year. <laughs> no, that's a swell idea. I know it. <laughs> well, I think you might wait a little while longer. Mm-hmm. I says you can wait a little while longer, can't you? Well, gee, you didn't. I didn't what? You didn't wait longer, and gee, you got the funniest one I ever saw. <laughs> Hey, Molly, do I look like a Halloween mask? Mm, no, I don't think so. <laughs> well, you might be a little more positive about it. <laughs> hey, get a load of the Hawaiian grass skirt. Hey, uh, old timer, uh, what do you rent the grass skirt for? Me? What's she? Uh, he says, what's the charge for renting a grass skirt? Hold the pins, girlie. <laughs> they shake for it. <laughs> Heavenly days, we've got to get busy. I didn't know a play could be such work. And maybe you didn't know that work could be such play with Johnson's Wax, the easy-to-use polish that makes your... fall. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. What are you doing here? Hi, folks. Hello. I just sold the proprietor a suit of armor. Oh. I got it in Hollywood. Oh. The movie people threw it out because it was top-heavy. A top-heavy suit of armor, yeah. eh? What movie was it in, Harpo? Night Must Fall. Well, I'll be seeing it. <laughs> Well, if that guy don't get on my if he if I'm gonna if I had a million dollars he wouldn't give me a dime and glad to get it too. Ah, uh, never mind him, McGee. We've got to get busy here. Hello, Molly. Hello, Fibber. Hi, heavenly days, Perry Como. Hi, Perry. You're going to be in the play tonight, you know. Yes, I am, but I forgot what part I'm playing. Oh, you're Mark Anthony, Perry. Don't you remember? In the first act, you stick Brutus with your dagger just as you start to sing that old feeling. But I don't know if I can use a dagger and sing at the same time. Well, you can make a stab at it, Perry. Try it. Everybody on stage for rehearsal. Why? 
Now, I'd like to explain the plot of this play to them that hasn't read the script. How many has read the script? I have. Oh, well, that's fine. Uh, How did you like it? You see, Molly, they're... <laughs> They're speechless. <laughs> now then, folks, for the casting. I'm going to play Julius Caesar. On the nose or across the board? Quiet, please. This is important. Not to me. All right, bud. Now, just for that, you ain't in this play anymore. You're fired. Ha, uh ha. -huh. I wasn't in it anyway. Oh. <laughs> well, then you're hired. Twenty-five bucks a performance. You want the job? Well, yes, thanks. All right. Now you're fired. <laughs> Mrs. Uppington, the president of the club. You here, Mrs. Uppington? Indeed, I am. Yeah, you know your lines, Uppy? I do indeed. Not that I have many lines. <laughs> you better take another look in the mirror, Uppy. <laughs> uh, let's hear you do your lines, Uppy. Hail, mighty Caesar. Hail. Well, that, that's not bad, but uh, give a little more on the second hail. <laughs> hail, mighty Caesar. Hail. That's the stuff, Uppy. Now, remember, you always give a cheer for Caesar, the reigning emperor. Yes, he never reigns, but you hail. <laughs> now, folks, Molly is playing Helen of Troy. You men to the left there are the Roman soldiers. Uh, who would I give the part of the captain to? Me, Caesar. I am being commander in chief of the radiators. <laughs> Gladiators, Mr. DePopolis. Oh, sure, Cupid. It's all the same thing. Hot stuff. Well, I hope you boys have been drilling with your spears. Oh, sure, Squeegee. We have been drilling everybody who is getting in somebody's way. There is one man who is coming so close to putting my eye out, I'm getting very sour puss at him. Yeah. <laughs> you should be very careful with those spears, Mr. DePopolis. Cupy, I think something has got you there. <laughs> yes, indeed. I'm telling these Roman soldiers, listen, stupid, I'm saying, with these fine spears, we are always sticking somebody through my gizzard, I'm thinking. So I'm telling all of him to put a cork on the end of his spear. Put a cork on the end of the spear? That's a good idea, Nick. No, Fizzer, that was a dumb idea. Oh. To get corks, everybody is bringing a bottle with one in it. And before I can say Jack Robinson Apopolis, each one of him has got the edge off his spears, and he's got an edge on himself. <laughs> Every soldier gets stuck for the drinks now, man. Now, let's see. Where's Silly Watson? Yeah, I am, Miss McGee, please, sir. Oh, yeah. You got all the sound effects, Sil? Yes, sir. I got me the soundest effects you ever heard, sir. Listen. Heavenly days, what's that for? Well, that's what it called for in little old strip, please, ma'am. Oh, where does it say that? It say that right here, boy. Huh? It say Julius Caesar enters in traffic excitement. <laughs> that ain't traffic. That's terrific. <laughs> yes, I thought it was too, please. <laughs> Did you get the horses, Silly, for the chariot race? Uh, no, no, ma'am, I did not yet. I don't know where I, I'm going to find it. Oh, well, now, don't fail me on them horses, Sil. I'm sure you can dig up a couple somewhere, Silly. Dig up? You are dead horses? <laughs> Live horses. Yes. Yeah. Is. Now, then, all you women over there are Caesar's Roman slaves. And every woman should seize her chance to escape housework slavery by using Johnson's wine. Powerful. Are you in this play? Sure. I'm Horatius at the bridge. Oh, yes. You're to defend the bridge over the Tiber River. Sure, and I know my lines, too. Huh? Hold that Tiber. Hold that Tiber. Hold that Tiber. Sometimes I think a great actor was lost in Harpo, and I hope they never find him. Take it, Ted. <laughs>
was Elmo Tanner whistling and Ted Weems playing Cross Your Heart. And now when you drive down city streets or out on country highways, notice the ever-increasing number of bright, shining cars on the road. Cars kept beautiful with Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner. If you want your own car to keep a gleaming polish, protected from dust and road film, from heat, cold, and dampness, don't delay another day. Wax your car the Johnson way. Now, now, up till now, we've done swell. So keep it up. Now, this is the last act. Now, so everybody on their toes. What is this, a ballet? Five down, bud. Places, everybody. How's my costume look, Molly? Fine, Caesar. But have you been wearing that wristwatch all through the show? Yeah, but I figured that was symbolical. Caesar always had time on his hands. <laughs> hey, Sill, are the horses ready? Yes, Miss McGee, they're ready. They ain't awful willing, but they're ready. <laughs> Uh, you ain't nervous, are you, Mrs. Uppington? Oh, well, that's right. Oh, yes. <laughs> Just keep an eye on McGee, dear. Yeah. Keep your chins up, Uppy. <laughs> Easy now. Remember, this is the last act and the big smash of the show. There goes the curtain. Quiet, everybody. All right, boys, take it away. We ought to. Shh. <laughs> To be or not to be? That is the question. And what is the answer? Speak, my noble Romans. Hold a tiber. Hold a tiber. And who art this beautiful slave who appears at my chariot wheel? Speak, fair maiden. Hail, mighty Caesar. Hail. No, 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 no. Not, not now. Be quiet. But I am the president of this club, Mr. McGee. Right now. Who is this fair maiden? Who sells these strawberries in the marketplace? Barlet, take yon lowly berries to my palace. What, noble Caesar? You would not speak kindly of me berries? I came to seize your berries, not to praise them. <laughs> but I repeat, who art thou, maiden? Whence comest thou? Who art you? I am Helen of Troy. I am far from home. Thrice have I tried to return to my homeland. Ah, fair maid. If at first thou dost not succeed, try, try again. Oh. <laughs> a pun, master, the lowest form of wit. Ah. <laughs> it is Mark Anthony. What dost thou here? With Johnson's wax thou dost not dust so often, noble Caesar. Ah. <laughs> Who speaks? I, fair Helen, Horatius at the bridge. Who won that last rubber? <laughs> Silence, Violet. Or Violet. <laughs> I repeat, Mark Anthony, what dost thou hear? I don't hear anything. <laughs> what fools I have about me. What cometh thou here for? To wed the lovely Helen. I come to woo her. Well, what sayest thou to that, Helen? Woo, woo! <laughs> <laughs> She's in a mooing wood. Uh, wooing moo. Say not so, Mark Anthony. I, Julius Caesar. Hail, mighty Caesar. Hail. Pipe down, pipe down. I also am enameled of this fair maiden, Anthony, and I will wed her. Wilt thou havest me, fair Helen? I will. Aha, she will. <laughs> Ah, but sire, huh? I picked her before she wilted. <laughs> Speak, Helen. What sayest thou? These sandals are killing. Er, uh, what, Mark? <laughs> thou must choose it between us. I bid thee think it well, for Caesar is an honorable man. Heed not his blandishment, spare maiden. He is over eager. He has Antony's in his pants. Oh, that's I heard. Oh, that's I heard. <laughs> Silence! Silence! I would make a proposal, Anthony. A chariot race. The winner to wed fair Helen. Done. Is this agreeable to you, most noble maiden? What can I lose, Marky? Have at it. Aha, Barlet, my horses. Barlet, my horses. You calling me, Miss McGee, please? Sir. His horses, silly. Hurry up. Yes, ma'am. 
I first as Emperor Anthony. A dirty advantage, my lord. Hail, mighty Caesar. Hail! 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 Silence! Or I would speed thee to the tigers in the Colosseum. They are not there, my lord. Not there? Where then are the tigers? In second place, if we <laughs> please. <laughs> My horses, my horses and my chariot. Ye are ready, sire. And may the best man win. Hooray! And may Anthony be the best man. Hooray! Hold the nags, Watsonius, whilst I get into the chariot. Yes, sir. Come, give me the reins. Still there. Now, friends, Romans, countrymen, a chariot race for the hand of Trojan Helen. The fastest time to the Colosseum and back. Each race to start with pistol shots. Not the lady invented yet, Mr. Oh. Oh, well. Then give some other signal, Barlet. Stand back, Roman. <laughs> I'm, I'm awful sorry, sir. I, I am for sure. I, I, I just never thought when I rung that little old bell. You never thought about what? That I borrowed them horses from the fire department. Oh. Does the linoleum in your kitchen give brightness and beauty to the whole room, or does the floor look faded and dull? Remember, Johnson's self-polishing glow coat keeps linoleum sparkling and clean without any work of rubbing or buffing. You'll be surprised how easily glow coat goes on the floor, how quickly it dries, transforming an unattractive, dingy floor into a lovely, polished surface while you sit back and watch. Try glow coat just once. Let this wonderful liquid polish save you hours of cleaning time by protecting your linoleum against dirt and wear. Glow Coat is spelled G-L-O hyphen C-O-A-T. Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. What on earth is the matter with your face? I'm horse knocked a couple of teeth loose. <laughs> well, I told you, you, you didn't know enough to handle that Ben-Hur business. Oh, is that so? Why, well, say, up in Saskatchewan, I was the leading theater man. Pepsi and McGee, I was known as in them days. Oh, my. <laughs> Pepsi and McGee, the sensational source of thrilling, throbbing, stage in Oh, dancing. stop it, sweetheart, stop it. <laughs> So long. Good night, all. <laughs> this is Harlow Wilcox reminding you that whenever you buy a polish for your floors, your furniture, or your automobile, be sure to specify one of the Johnson's Wax products. Your continued loyalty to these dependable wax polishes makes it possible for you to hear Bibber McGee and Molly every Monday night. Now, we'll be with you again next Monday night at the same time. Among the musical selections presented on this program were Goodbye, Jonah, from Virginia, and that old feeling from the Vogues of 1938. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.